What's good internet? How's it going? Welcome back to the John Graves Show. And this video has been driving me insane for like a good while now because I've been trying my hardest to kind of get this out and say it without stumbling over my words too much. And it has been a pain. But without further ado, Dragon Age 4 development has been reportedly rebooted to Anthem. And, and surprisingly, how this happened was that some of the guys, or at least like when Anthem was kind of running through its developmental process, they took the team from the from Dragon Age 4, and then they put them on the Anthem team. And as they went on to say, the game was rebooted and, uh, and actually put into the Anthem's uh, code base, which looking at how they're doing the Frostbite system and how all the code and everything is in Anthem now, from what I've taken from that is that specifically the only thing that they really got to do now was move around some assets and then possibly change around like a little bit of the resources and then bam, you have Dragon Age now. Just just sort of like a plug and play. You swap out some character models, uh, models, you pop in some brand new environments and then bam, you got a Dragon Age Origins game, which doesn't really seem to be too bad though, but I don't know how that's really going to affect the, frost, the, the Frostbite engine. So here's hoping. Speaking of Anthem's uh, future, um, they finally released patch 1.08, which apparently now it fixes the issue that is causing loot, uh, loot, loot to drop for javelins other than the one being used. They fixed the Elysium cash, um, uh, cash items, which appear, say man, which don't appear until you're completing another objective or starting the game. That is a big, big, big problem. The Titans, Yerxis, uh, Luminous, and the Fury enemies should no longer disappear here when when another player start, start, starts an event on free play. This game has so many things that needs that that needs to be fixed. And it's crazy to me because like from say from the events to the end game to how they're trying to drop all this this like the say legendary weapons and armor and whatnot. Pretty crazy how how all this is playing playing out. However, there's an article here that also kind of talks about what Anthem could have been, which might have actually been pretty more interesting. You know, which is the six weeks from launch. Uh, Anthem really isn't beyond redemption, and specifically, it mostly talked about how like that um, Anthem is is specifically one of the games that probably could actually like rise from this from this little, little little failure it's had game games have done this before you know like you got star wars night nice nice the old republic well star wars the old republic not nice the old 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 republic elder scrolls online De destiny one one around man when the taken king came out final, final fantasy 14 a realm a realm re reborn and so on and so forth I mean, if they really wanted to, it's a strong possibility. The difference is, though, is that I believe that Final Fantasy XIV, like, like they had to restart the game from scratch. So, because it, because, or at least like that, that they had to put more effort into it to make it something better than what it was. You know, whereas a game like Destiny was just like, okay, which is the same thing that they did for the Forsaken DL DLC, was that we're going to actually make, make this a very interesting game with a really good story 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 and everything and give you all the assets and all the little knickknacks you like before we took them away you know same thing for rainbow six siege but i think uh final fantasy 4 14 is the outlier here here because that is a big time mmo so they kind of had to do a lot to change um uh I'm gonna change that as quickly as possible whereas anthem is just a co-op shooter which that you say like, which that you and some friends are supposed to just travel around like the little landscape and take care of mission ob objectives together, which I don't really find to be too much of a problem. However, speaking to Cody Hudson about what the game was, because he left back in 2014 and came back in 2017, and the way how that he talks about Anthem, it seems as though is that it was something that, like, like the game was supposed to be very, very, very different from how it was like before he left because let me see right here um what was it it was uh the weather said like because because the big thing that he was talking about it was the weather and everything uh casey found himself consumed with chaos blah 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 
Oh yeah, I think I'll start with say like the weather reacting unusually. City say cities crumbling, crumbling at say at the foundation and threatening to to collapse at a at, at a moment and communities rallying uh, rallying together in ways that that were as surprising as they were selfless um uh, as they were they were selfless all say all in effort to survive something that say like that cannot be stopped stop stopped or reasoned with. Because before Anthem was supposed to be a four-player survival game versus you and the uh, and the environment, and then I believe the javelins were supposed to be like be like a last resort, or at least like sort of like a lost planet thing, where basically like like the suits were supposed, were supposed to be like your last resort to get around around the area and fix things. Because he goes on to say that the weather system was also supposed was supposed to play a big deal in how Anthem played. Because depending on the area of the weather, or at least how he pre presented it, was like open world games, they can only go so far because each because each area is sort of sanctioned off to kind of have like its own little like like bits of information, right? And then once you play those, well, that's the end of it. Like you know, like you really have nothing else unless they decide to put more stuff in there or they decide to expand it with like an extra mission or something. You know what I mean? And he went on to say that because this is like the brand new thing for open world, right? It's like that he was talking about the weather system, uh, the weather system where that the weather system was was specifically supposed to change. Because he talked about, uh, I can't really, I, I gotta find it, but it was he was talking about specific levers, uh, like that they would go somewhere and then that there were levers, and with these levers you could change the weather like on an instant. And when you change the weather, or based on the weather change, like different events would happen, um, you would have to fight different enemies, or you'd be different tactics. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if this, this would actually affect your javelin or not, but with how he was talking about it, it's like, well, if well, if Anthem was a was a co-op survival game with these pieces of armor, and the weather could change on the fly, and most likely depending on like let's say you get to like you get to a temple and it's a sunny day you know like it might be a bit more humid and whatnot and then you have to fight like more brutish enemies but then if it's snowing or raining or whatever then then like you may have to deal with like flying enemies that kind of like shoot different projectiles or or like or say or like you have a muddier terrain and whatnot and you're slipping all over the place which is interesting to think about however you know, it just never came to fruition. Sadly, though, we are stuck stuck with the destiny that we have now, and there is a strong possibility that they could still make this one from 2014. Because when he's speaking about about all these ideas, it sounds as if like he's talking about before he left, and this is what they all thought up. But if they can somehow bring that back. You know, because plenty of games have done that. I mean, like, No Man's Sky has done, like, a 180 from being one of the most anticipatingly horrible games to come out to it becoming somewhat of a, like, somewhat living up to what people thought it was going to be. And then, you know, I believe Anthem can probably re re reach that, but if they want to, to like, reach those heights, they got to do that fast. Because, again, you know, like, cause they're, because they're competing against, well... Well, now the Division Two, you know, and soon to be Borderlands Three that is coming out in September. So they gotta, so they gotta wrap this up quick, you know. Like what, like what, like whatever they do with Destiny Three, like which it is gonna happen because again, Destiny, like in a whole, is supposed to be a ten-year project. Now I'm not sure if Destiny One and Two, like um, if that. I think that's been like a five-year program, um, a process, or like five or like five or six-year process. But but either way, it's like yeah, you know, like they got five or like like they got they got four or five more years to sort of like do what they want to do with Destiny before like that just goes away. But that is what I have to say about that. I'll catch you guys on the next John Grave show. If you got anything to tell me, if I'm wrong about about anything, please tell me in the comment section. I'll catch you on the next John Grave show. You watch anime, keep playing video games. Bye.